Hey everyone, Mr. Naylor here. Uh, as a reminder, make sure that you uploaded yesterday's homework helper. That'd be homework helper 9.4C. You do want to upload that so you can get credit. And I trust that it's a good sign that you're taking a look at this quick video because uh, hopefully that means you're going to take a little time now and look at this practice sheet. Today's one of those days where we're going to put on the brakes, give you a chance to practice. Unfortunately, uh, we're not able to be together, um, but I'm still here, happy to help you. Make sure you're helping yourself, and the first thing would be by seeing how we can work through this class example. Now, listen, if you're saying, Miss Naylor, I think I'm ready to try this on my own, great. Either push pause or maybe just fast forward to near the end of this video where we give the answers. But uh, if you'd like to hear again how to work out one of these sort of uh, full-blown problems, I'm going to uh, spend a few minutes showing you how to do that for this class example. Now, um, we've got uh, uh, this fraction kind of written in factored form, right? And uh, we talked a little bit yesterday that when it's already in factored form, that's to make it easy for you to see, well, to see the, how the numerator and denominator interact. And I hope that the first thing you see is that we have a repeated factor in the numerator and denominator, which means that we're going to have a whole at the bad number. Now, the bad number, make note, is the number 4, but that means that there's going to be a whole at x equals 4. Now, remember, after we decide that there's a whole at x equals 4, we say that we can cross off, at least we can cross off temporarily, this x minus 4, x minus 4, and that gives us kind of like a, a, a new fraction. I like to call it, again, kind of a temporary fraction which still contains 2x, x plus 2, and an x plus 3 squared. Now, what can I do with this fraction? I can plug in 4. I'm going to plug in 4 for x. The reason I'm doing that is because that's going to give me the y value. Now, you know, you kind of want to do this math. You know, 2 times 4, that's going to give you 8. And, of course, um. Uh, 4 plus 2, that's going to give you 6. So what do we got here? 8, we've got 6, and uh, 7 uh, squared. Well, of course, that's going to give us 49. So I'm saying 48 over 49. 48 over 49, that's going to be the y value for this hole in the graph. Now listen, we're done with this temporary equation over here, so I'm going to erase it so we're not tempted to use it. And... Um, Let's think about the vertical asymptote. Well, the vertical asymptote is going to come from the remaining bad number, which would still be negative 3, uh, which is going to give us a 0 in the denominator. Now, there's not much more to do with x equals negative 3 except to classify it as a vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptote. Ah, the degree. The degree. You mean if I foil this out? Well, yeah, if I foil this out, but keep in mind that I'll get an x squared out of that, and then I'll get more x out of this, giving me a total of 2x to the third. Now, I'm not going to multiply the rest of it together because all I really need is what would be with the degree. That would be with the highest exponent. If you look at the denominator, you're going to get an x squared out of this, and then another x, and that's going to give me a total of, oh, of x to the third. Now... Uh, because my degrees are the same in the numerator and denominator, I'm going to be using the a over b method, which is to basically use the coefficients to give me my horizontal asymptote, which ends up being at 2. Slant asymptote. Well, you're only going to have a slant if the top is 1 greater than the bottom, so we don't have that. How about the, um, we can just say none there, right? How about the y-intercept? Now, the y-intercept's when you plug a 0 in for x. We've been talking about this. you got to make sure that you can plug in 0 without using Desmos and be confident in the outcome. Now, there's a lot of zeros here, but it turns out that this one with a box around it is the main one. 
because that's going to give me zero. The other ones are just going to give me some numbers. Either I get four or negative four. Um, let's see, I lost track of my writing here. So yeah, I get negative four. Uh, in the bottom, I get uh, three squared, which is nine, and I get another negative four. But as I said, this zero right here is the main one because that is going to give me a zero in the numerator. And if I end up with zero in the numerator, it doesn't really matter what I get in the denominator as long as it's not also zero. What we're trying to say is that that's going to come out to be zero. That means the y-intercept is at zero. Zero, zero to be exact. How about the x-intercept? The x-intercept is what makes the numerator equal zero. Now, my numerator is kind of all mixed up here, so I'm going to rewrite it. It's 2x, it's x plus 2, and x minus 4. Again, that's the numerator. So what makes the numerator equal 0? Well, I'm glad you asked, okay? Because we've already talked a little bit about how the, um, uh, the number 4 has already been classified as a whole. So that's not going to work. Now, the number 0... We've already figured out that the number zero is definitely going to be a y-intercept, but that also means that it's going to duplicate as an x-intercept. But I don't want you to forget about negative two. Negative two is another number that makes the numerator equal zero. So therefore, it's a x-intercept. So what's the graph going to look like? Well, as we've said many times, you want to take the time to actually graph these features. And don't rely too much on Desmos. Not too much, okay? So, you know, we can graph negative 3 as a vertical asymptote. Um, oops, I almost forgot the hole in the graph. Well, the hole is at 4, 48 over 9. 4, 48 over 9 is almost at 4, 1. It's almost at 4, 1, right? But it's 4... Uh, 48 over 49. So I got the hole there. Uh, what did we have? Uh, didn't we have a horizontal asymptote at 2? Now, if the horizontal asymptote's at 2, then it's above the hole in the graph. Okay, because the hole in the graph, remember, was at almost 1. Uh, what do we have? A, a y-intercept at double 0 and an x-intercept also at negative 2. I think we've got uh, all the features in place. Um, kind of feeling like this hole that I wrote here is a little bulky, so I'm just going to erase that. But um, let's see how it looks. Let's see how it looks on Desmos. Okay, is that a good sign? We see this branch on the left here. This branch on the left looks like it's kind of fitting nicely into these asymptotes. Um, so I can draw that, hopefully with good confidence. And the branch on the right, well, it does a little dipsy-do right here, but um, I feel like it's going to also pass through the hole that we came up with. And so I can make it do its little dipsy-do, come back up, and proceed on its way to the horizontal asymptote. So that's a good sign. Now, you know, in Desmos, you can type in the asymptotes, you can type in the asymptotes. You can also trace using your cursor. You can trace to this hole. And if you get right on that hole, it will show an empty space. And it'll even say that it's undefined. So that's kind of cool. But you have to trace to it to see for sure. I feel like we have a pretty good looking graph. I feel like we have a lot of success here with these uh, list of answers. And so now it's your turn. I'm going to encourage you to practice these three problems. I'm not going to require you to upload it. Uh, that's because I want you to bring this practice sheet to class. The next time we're together, you will do a mini check, which I'm sure is going to look a lot like some of these problems. Now remember, reach out to me if you have a question, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.